Nothing new, man. Everybody loves to hate on Tesla. Today, we're going to be talking about the Roadster, Tesla Roadster. We're going to be talking about also product delays because a lot of people have a lot of smoke for Tesla, Elon, for not delivering on products and they come late. So I'm like, man, people are consumers. They're normies. They're used to products coming out like the iPhone. And they don't know when you manufacture a car, it's just different. Let's hop into the video. Shout outs to Marcus. Marcus got a podcast. It's called Waveform Clips. And this is just the clips. Let's get it. But let's talk about what you two really want to talk about. Yeah. How do I? How do I? How do I explain this? So Elon was drunk tweeting last <laughs> yeah. night. <laughs> yeah. I. You remember? You guys remember the Tesla Roadster? Anybody? What is were you? Yeah. Were you born then? Do you remember? <laughs> I think I was just coming out of the womb when, when like rumors of that came about. Yeah. Yeah. There. Back in 2017, there was a. They had this Tesla semi event and it wasn't really expected. But at the end of the event, they were like, by the way, there's some cargo on the Tesla semi truck. And they rolled this car out the back and it was a new updated second gen 2020 Tesla Roadster. And they went over all the specs and how it would have 600 miles of range and a 200 kilowatt hour battery and a zero, a one and a half second, zero to 60, all these crazy things. Uh, I think it would have like an 8.8 second quarter mile, just ridiculous stuff. And then they gave people drives in a prototype and then we never heard from it again. Did they say 2020 right from the start? 2020. Okay. Yeah. So 2020 came and went, and 2021 came and went, and 2022 came and went, and 2023 came and went. Now it's 2024. In the time since 2017, there have been various waves that this thing has made impress, where like Elon or Franz will say something or tweet something like, oh yeah, when it finally comes out, it'll be better than we originally promised. And we're like, Also too, I believe investors asked him at one of the investor days and he spoke about it, but Guys, it's, it's it's on the back burner, okay? It's coming out. Calm down. And later on in this video, I'm going to show you guys actually what it takes to make a car. Because I think a lot of people, you don't know what it takes. It's not a product. We're not asking for an iPhone 17, 18, 19, and 20. We're not creating a fidget. We're not creating a remote controller. This is the car. So a car takes a long time from actual the concept to mass production. Mass production. Producing them is vastly different and especially with something like a cyber truck that was actually on the plate but of course people got mad because that wasn't delivered on time and it's like man i think tesla just needs to stop telling normies about any products like unless they're mass produced because it it's so funny when there's mm -hmm. other vehicles right <laughs> when all these other companies create these prototypes and these limited edition cars where it's not even like mass scaled yet they're all hype. They're all like, oh man, it's gonna beat Tesla. It's gonna be the new new car of the future. It's gonna and then they never come out. Mass produced cars never come out. They get recalled, they're limited, but they don't say anything. But when Tesla's late on a date by two years, three years for a complex vehicle, which pushed the edge of manufacturing and it has wire steering, like they don't care. It's just like, well, it didn't come out when you said it was going to come out. You said it was going to come out November 15 at 8 o'clock, and it didn't come out. Like, yeah, it came two, uh, two years later. But a lot of vehicles that have concepts, and you see at all these EV conferences and expos, they just never come out. But all of a sudden, we're happy about those cars. We're like, oh, yeah, we're cheering them on. The competition's coming. It's, it's ridiculous, kind of. We're like, great. But also, when? Uh, and, you know, Tesla's notoriously late with things, but this is the one vehicle, I think you're, you're on team, this is never coming out. <laughs> <laughs> He's I, got I, notes. I, I was, right? Okay. But I, I feel like I'm really just interested in, like, trying to understand what Elon is trying to accomplish with this car, because yeah. really most people are not going to be interested in a two-door impractical sports car from Tesla. That's kind of where the, you know, McLarens and Ferraris of the world kind of yeah. shine. And then he's talking about making the car fly. Let's go, let's go over yeah. what he tweeted, and then let's start I, with that. I think uh, Miles wants to debunk him, sort of. And uh, I would love to get into the physics of yeah. it. So, okay, Elon last night tweets, and this is like Tuesday when this is being uh, tweeted, and now you're seeing this on Friday. But something might have been said in the meantime. But he says tonight we radically increased the design goals for the new Tesla Roadster. There will never be another car like this, if you could even call it a car. And then he replies, Tesla slash SpaceX collab. Then he replies. Production design complete and unveil end of year, aiming to ship next year. And then says, I think it has a shot at being the most mind-blowing product demo of all time. 
first of all, Humane Pin AI, most mind blowing <laughs> product demo of all time. So the big shoes to fill, but sure, of course. Uh, this is shades of like what's been talked about before. I think you. I find it really funny. It's like, who are these guys? And it's no disrespect to them, right? It's like. You don't understand what he's doing with his own business. He's running a multi-billion dollar company. You have never ran a multi-billion dollar company. So we could sit back and backseat drive, but this is backseat CEO, backseat CTO, backseat CT CFO, backseat COO. And then you're like, hey, let me make these determinations. This is not a wise choice for your company. Even though you created a couple of companies that's worth billions of dollars. Look, guys, I have a mic now and I'm speaking online. So I know how to actually quarterback this whole entire multi-billion dollar company. And I know what's I know what will be best for your company. Like Elon has already proved concept of making actually EVs look sexy. Like before people created EVs and it never worked. But Elon started to do it. So it's kind of like you don't just kind of say, OK, maybe he knows what he's doing and I'm going to sit back and wait because I don't have any skills. And when you're making jokes about like flying cars and I'm, sh I'm sure he doesn't mean actually freaking flying. So learn to take it with a grain of salt. But you're not saying nothing about Chinese companies who make the same claims about their car. China's flying cars are ready for liftoff and people are all going crazy about it. And. They're like, yeah, man, these, these cars in China, they're going to fly. I'll believe them. But as soon as Elon Musk says something, it's like, oh, man, does he know what he's talking about? Does he know what he's doing with his company? It's like it gets kind of ridiculous. It's like, guys, come on. We're not talking about iPhones. You're specialized in iPhones and unrevealing iPhones and opening them up. But maybe you just don't know how to run a multi-billion dollar company. Like, And maybe also you don't have insider information, right? So will it come or will it not? I mean, Tesla has always pushed the envelope and created great products. And they've been doing great as far as their scheme of actually having the Roadster. And then after that, having the Model S's or the Plaid that created what? A higher end luxury vehicle. And then actually eventually being able to roll out Model 3. And possibly, I don't know. I don't know if it's coming up, but possibly a Model 2. So their process of actually how to do it uh, at least the team at Tesla, including Elon, has been good so far. So can we trust our general to lead us or do we have to second guess everything he does because the delivery date is two years late on a complex vehicle like a car? Hmm. Years ago, we we talked about like the SpaceX package, how there's going to be a base roadster, which is just a, an electric two door. And then there's a SpaceX package version, which is going to have cold gas thrusters from rocket technology on the car, which lets it do this crazy one and a half second zero to 60. And maybe they put them on the front of the car for better braking. And maybe they put them under the car and it can hop short distances. I don't know why you would want to do any of this stuff on the street or even to be honest, how street legal any of that is. But to answer your question, I always thought it was just halo car stuff. This will be low volume, which is why it's the lowest priority on the totem pole. But if they can claim that they have the fastest zero to 60 of any production car and it's a Tesla, that pays for itself. But will the fastest zero to 60 version of the, the Roadster actually be a production car variant? Because I feel like all of this SpaceX stuff yeah. is going to, you know, I feel like it's going to be very hard to make it road legal based on what he's claiming. I mean, yeah. do you remember that Key and Peele sketch of the basketball player? After winning the game, telling all the kids that they can fly. <laughs> you can fly. Go to the... Yes, and I remember that. And then they that. tried to fly. I feel like something very <laughs> similar could happen. I mean, having a sub one second zero to 60, that's unfathomable. Yeah. So a lot of things have happened since the original 2017 announcement. Specifically, a couple other fully electric hypercars have actually gotten unveiled and at least started to be demoed and shipped. The one that comes to mind for me is the Rimats Nevera, which we did a video about. We got to shoot with Triple F. And that obviously is a two plus million dollar car. But... Same flagship concept. They made a fully electric two-door and practical sports car with ballistic acceleration. And that just as a product was entertaining enough for some people to be really into it. And there's a couple other things kind of like that that have also come out. So I feel like there's a chance that Elon was like, oh, okay, the Roadster no longer beats those cars at anything. So the one thing that does make this stand out is if we <laughs> do this, this SpaceX collab. And just to be clear, I'm not a rocket scientist. So what? all I really you understand, are? yeah, I mean, I'm this well, also, too, the Cybertruck, and most people don't understand this, the Cybertruck was kind of like the same thing, right? They used stainless steel on the Falcon 9, the heavy load in the Starship specifically, and they understood that they could also utilize the same type of material in the Cybertruck. So collaboration with SpaceX, I don't necessarily believe he's going to put 
rockets on the ship, but he's going to have something. Or maybe he has nothing. It's almost irrelevant. I think a lot of times people don't understand they're really listening to Elon throw things across the board, talk about it, talk smack. He has an imagination, but he's done that for a lot of things. And he does that throughout the book. If you actually read the book by Walter Isaacson, he always does that. And I don't think I sit there and be like, man, if he don't produce a car and it can't launch into the sub atmosphere, then it ain't a car. Like, Calm down on the calm down, guys, okay? <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, how does a dude, like, this is so funny. How does a dude who launches a rocket reusable into space, right? And then he says he's going to do something with a car company, which he's done great, creates gigafactories. I mean, he's always challenging engineers and the actual experts that is on his team is always like, wow, man, we didn't think that was possible. I remember I just read something in a book where, when he was actually using the stainless steel, they were like, how thick does it have to be? And they're like, oh, 4.5 millimeters. And he was like, well, can we make it four? And everybody was like, I don't know. I'm not sure about it. I don't think so. And he's like, bump it. Let's do it. And then so he's always pushing the edge. And they're like, oh, it actually worked out. Most people are more reserved. Most people are more fearful. And so that's just normies, right? So net net at the end of the day, I think this is just a you know conversation in a podcast of Normie speculating on the magnificent. Like this is just I don't know, maybe it's a shock to you guys. But all of a sudden the other companies they did this and they did that and they had a limited production and it's a okay. Yeah, they got limited production, but that's all they produced, right? They don't produce cyber trucks, they don't produce power walls and mega packs. So, you know, that kind of rollout is gonna be a little bit more simpler. It's only that and that's all and it's a two million dollar car so i mean it's not the same in any shape form or fashion so the car will come out when the car comes out and it is what it is you guys but all i really understand about the cold gas thrusters is that it's compressed air it, like when you see the rockets that are like self-landing like reorient themselves in midair they're using cold gas thrusters to push a very heavy rocket in midair to be vertically oriented to like land and I'm pretty sure when International Space Station astronauts are doing like spacewalks, they have like little cold gas thrusters to like psh, psh, to like move around. I think that's what that is. <laughs> I mean, like without knowing anything about it, if I'm judging the size of a cold air thruster that moves a rocket ship versus the size of a cold air thruster that moves a person in space with no gravity, yeah, we're talking very different sizes and something to move a car that can already do zero to sixty in two seconds. Like how? Yeah, I don't know the sizing of it, but also. In 2017, he said there will be 10 of them seamlessly put around the car. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, what, what does that entail? There's not a ton of space in the Model S. Like, batteries are already taking up a lot of space in EVs. Where are these thrusters going to be? What do they look like? How big are they? How are they powered? Have you seen? They're called uh, reaction control systems in space talk. I also want to say, too, I think that these guys and most people don't understand. And when you're actually hearing words from Elon, you're talking about the designer, right? And he's also an engineer too. So I think he knows a little bit more about SpaceX and what the rockets can or can't do, but not saying that that's going to actually happen, having 10 thrusters. But at the end of the day, uh, they're failing to understand, like he's saying something, but also he's going to implement it and try it and it's going to fail or it doesn't seem logical. He just says it and does it. Just like if you, once again, read the book, <laughs> you know, he's constantly doing things that is like everybody else is looking around like, are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? We can't do this. This is not allowable. And he's like, let's try it and see where it goes. And sometimes it falls flat on his face and he's like, all right, we can't do that. But sometimes it works. Most of the time it works, at least from the book. Right. So that's what we have here. So if he says like, hey, man, I'm going to put these thrusters on it and then it wouldn't be surprised if they were out there testing a the vehicle and he's like, hey, man, put this on the vehicle. And then they're like, and people do it. And then it pans out to be wrong or it's not good to use. And then he's like, OK, well, we can take it off. Like, that's how it works. That's called innovation, guys. So somebody who's always pushing the boundaries, you know, you guys are normies. So you think like, oh, let's not do it. It's not possible. You think with limitations. Other people could push the boundaries. And understand, like, I'm going to drop this on 25 tracks on one album, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to open up my own distribution and streaming platform, and da-da-da-da. But once they start implementing it or testing it, then they realize that they have to scale back, and they can't do it.
Now, everybody else is laughing because that person sits around with egg on their face. But when it actually does work, everybody else is going to be sitting behind them. They're going to be sitting behind the competition. So while you were laughing, thinking that the guy was crazy and all of his ideas were stupid, you're going to be in last place. And that actually shows throughout EVs in America. Like as far as anybody else creating EVs, everybody's far behind Tesla. Like nobody's vertically integrated, let alone building out factories. And so, but everybody was laughing. And I'm pretty sure let's get the laughing at the Tesla Roadster, right? The first Roadster. Let's let's laugh at that. Let's have fun when people were making fun of him outfitting the Lotus and then that actually that vehicle, you know, kind of being a terrible vehicle. But net net, people were laughing back then, like, why are you doing it? This is a stupid approach. So I think proof of concept really stands more than just chit chat on the internet. This talk and have you seen what they look like on like the old school NASA spaceships? No. They're like these here, I'll put a picture in the Slack. They're like these borderline like Susian horns on. I, oh <laughs> Susian? Dr. Like Dr. Seuss. Seuss. Oh. And my thing is like the weight, right? Power to weight. That's that's a real thing. And so I've done some just basic rudimentary math comparing this to other cars that also have like very high or very low zero to sixty. So oh, nine eleven okay. turbo with lightweight package that's six hundred forty horsepower does like a two point one zero to sixty <laughs> miles on the way receipts point eighteen <laughs> horsepower per pound. For Mass yeah. Nevera. 1,800 horsepower, 1.80 to 60, 0.35 uh, horsepower per pound. SF90XX, that's 1.9 seconds, 0 to 60. That's like 1,015 horsepower. Yeah. That's uh, 0.267 horsepower per pound. And then the fastest 0 to 60 ever recorded is the McMurtry Sperling. That's yes. uh, 1.4 seconds, 0 to 60, and that has a 0.45 horsepower per pound. So this is going to have to be like an all-wheel drive car. I'm not sure if we're going to have tri-motors or quad motors but that's going to add more weight and if you actually want to have realistic range because a lot of cars in these segments will have like realistically like 50 to 100 miles of real range if you're actually getting on it you know right he'd be one of them people who got fired by eli straight up man like eli would fire a guy like that like i don't think we can do it like <laughs> i i don't think that's possible i did some calculations and you know uh, once again guys if you actually read the book the biography once again by Walter, then you could see that so many times people within the company talk just like that and Elon fires them because people are constantly saying like, you can't technically do that. That's impossible. And then Elon's like, oh, okay. And then he like goes to the side and tells somebody in lead like, yo, fire that guy. Fire the whole team. <laughs> like people are always chatting, sh talking about what you can and can't do. And so it's no surprise that it's like, hey, I did some I did some calculations on my computer. All right. So I'm about to just dispel Elon real quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, his engineers attempt to do that, like while they're in the factory, while they're on the floor, while they're where they're at SpaceX or Tesla. And, you know, it doesn't go go. It doesn't go well for him. Right. And so. I think that it's just a little bit funny when you hear people talk about it like that. They're like, well, I did some, I just topped in Google and I did some calculations and that ain't happening. Like, come on, man. And so what I'm showing right here on the screen, guys, is like the process of making a car. It doesn't seem pretty simple, right? So let's look at this. <laughs> How many steps are part of the process to create a vehicle, right? Not only just the steps to create the vehicle once you got it in, the facility, but we're talking about all these components and these parts that you see, like they have quality control. So they got QC, you know, there's a massive amounts of logistics and administration that goes with it. There are expenses, like it's not simple. So even looking at the product when it's in the factory, it's just like, wow, man, that looks very complicated. Look at the machinery, right? That it takes to build out these cars. So when you're actually going to release a car, it's going to take some time to develop. And especially if we're going to be doing more than a limited production, but even in a limited production with a lot of other things and moving pieces going, it can get very complex. So it's not like making a phone. So we can't compare it to making a phone. And we also have to remember that Tesla is vertically integrated. Unlike a lot of other car companies or even just any other people providing products and services, if we look at Apple, Apple's not vertically integrated, so it's going to be way more easy for them to come up with a release date because they don't have too much on their plate. 
once Foxcom gets it done, they kind of just take it and sell it. <laughs> you know, they design it. They have Foxcom run the play, TSMC run the play, and then they're like, okay. And they box it up and give it to them. So I just wanted to kind of show that because I think a lot of people in this, let's say, environment where most people are like, I want the product now. I want it yesterday. They kind of forget that these things take time and it's not as easy to create those products. And especially when we're talking about a car that at least they're aiming to break boundaries and score high records with. <laughs> But like I said, we're so busy, busy. We got, you know, shipping one day or same day Amazon. So when it comes to producing a vehicle that's massively different and more complex, we think, well, the new iPhone came out on time. The new Kanye West album dropped. Ain't that the same? So they 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 known for delivering late. Okay, they're known for delivering late, but are they known for delivering the product once it comes out? Last time I checked, it's the safest vehicle. Last time I checked, it's the number one best-selling car in the world. Not for an EV, not for a sedan that's premium. No, just best-selling car in the world. Yeah, last time I checked, but I guess they don't deliver, right? The biggest issue we got here is that they don't deliver on time. They're a year late, two years, three years. Same thing with artificial intelligence. Like, uh, real world application of artificial intelligence, and you're mad because it ain't come out yet. Like, man, that joint is always late. Since they've been developing artificial intelligence, it's not even 10 years. And it takes you to be at least 16 to even be able to drive as a human. So, why don't we give the computer some time, at least the same amount of time that it takes a real live human? to be able to drive a car and it be legal. I mean, come on, man. Make it make sense. Or 14 or whatever the age is. So this is why people just need to slow their roll and watch their mouth. Because at the end of the day, it's like we got some of the best engineers that are tackling this problem and the product will come out when the product comes out. I get it, but I also just look at it from a different perspective. I'm not always just like, well, they said this and Elon said this. Why y'all always hanging on Elon's every word? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never seen nobody, CEO or anybody else, you hang on every word he say. Man, he said at one point it was this. So it's got to be this. I'm pretty sure Steve Jobs said a bunch of stuff and it didn't come out in the final product. And that's because that's the process. The only thing that's different is, you get information from the CEO and people within the company about products. When have you guys ever known what Apple is doing? They don't really tell anybody about anything until they just roll out the product. And so that's really the difference. I'm pretty sure people are saying crazy things within a design studio, just like Elon. I'm pretty sure they have sketches that you don't see and models that you don't see, manufactured products that you don't see that they've created and they had to throw in the trash. The only thing is that y'all get to hear what the CEO says all the time. And so that's why you're like, well, he said this and he said that and that don't make any sense because you're just witnessing a communication, a line of communication that you don't get usually. You don't get usually an actual CEO telling you the details of products that are coming out, the services and what they're designing. And that CEO also is not the designer. He's not in the studio. Elon's in the studio. He's a designer in the studio. He's also walking the floor. He's a part of the engineering team. And so he's a part of the whole process and he's sharing his ideas. So I just see him as that. So when he's talking, what he talks, I'm like, oh, okay. He's on his creativity. He's on his artistry. He's just talking about the drawing board. Like, what are they thinking? Ideas that he's going to be telling the engineers, like, can we put thrusters on this bad boy? And then testing them or maybe the engineers being able to tell them like, no, maybe not. Maybe he's going to be like, all right, man, how do we challenge the FTA on changing the rule and allowing this? So he's always pushing the edge, pushing the boundaries, pushing the rules and regulations, and even pushing experts by what they know or what they think is possible. And it's not really physics. It's really other ideas of why that can't be.
So it's always like that. Even like I said, again, read the book, guys. Once you read the book, you get a better understanding of what Elon is like. But there's been many times where someone's like, hey, man, we have to put this in the car at, let's say, the flooring of the car has to be made. Oh, no, no. Here's one specifically. The batteries had caps on them inside the car when they transported the batteries over. And he's like, why do these batteries have caps? Like, why does the... And they're like, well, it needs to protect the plug. And he's like, why? And then here go all the experts. No, that's the process. And it protects the plugs from bending and da, 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 da. And then so he's like, remove the caps. Because the caps, one time, they couldn't ship out batteries because they didn't have the caps to put on the batteries in the plug. So the fork wouldn't bend. And so he's like, dispose of it, waste it. It's a waste mine thing. He's like, that's an L, man. I don't know who told you that. Nobody could find out who said it and why they said it. But everybody was telling him, like, no, this is what it is. This is what it's got to be. And, and you're crazy. They got rid of the damn cap and they never had the actual plugs bend. So it was just something that was there that everybody thought should be there and everybody was standing on their square. So kind of like this video also, too. I think people just tend to second guess and they don't understand what they're really getting when they get Elon is that you're getting inside the mind of somebody that's in the design studio and he uses Twitter at a soundboard. Um, you know, Tim Cook never tells you all anything. And I don't even think Tim Cook is actually giving suggestions on how to design an iPhone. So maybe even the person that is, if you go to their Twitter or their actual personal page, they're talking about ideas that they had that got scrapped and it's crazy. So you'll like talk to somebody who's maybe in charge of a division, like let's say Apple Watch. And then you're like, hey man, let me see your designs for the Apple Watch. He's like, really? And then he got he starts showing you designs and sketches, and you're like, bro, what? And then he got an Apple Watch that was on your forehead, one that you wear with a band and the forehead, and the Apple Watch is here. He had another sketch with the Apple Watch on your on your arm, around your your upper chest, one with the Apple Watch around your nose. Like <laughs> he probably had mad crazy sketches of designs that you never get to see. He's not the CEO, so when he talks about it, whether it be in the design studio or he dreams up this ideas in the studio and he tells other engineers and they push it down the line, it's like, that's whack, man, that's crazy, it won't work out, or it does some things get kept, you don't see that. And so when you hear Elon speak, you're literally hearing the designer speak. And they're going to throw those ideas against the wall and then the product will come out and be vastly different. Right. Same thing with the top cyber truck. It missed a couple of metrics, but that's because once you start mass producing, there's things that you couldn't project and you couldn't see in the future. Right. And so things will change. Once again, this is not the iPhone. This is way more complex. So stop holding it to that standard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like even your devices, because they're not as complex as a car. Uh, they have issues when you put them in the real world versus what was planned and what was told when it was marketed. And it's not because of the Illuminati or secret society or a plot and scheme to lie to people and deceive. It's just that it plays out differently. And so that's it, man. That's all I had to say. But I know people just always talk about product delays and they really just don't get what happens. And I'll just say that is the example. That is the reason why you guys are not getting it. When you hear Elon speak, you're listening to the designer. But if you could hear every designer, every product of every company, and you could look at their sketchbook, you'll see the crazy ideas that they had. And you would probably joke on them and clown and say, oh, he never, how are you going to come out with that car? He didn't come out with that product. Yeah, that's because it's got to go through the flames and the fires of the process. But in the mind, let's shoot off ideas. That's it, guys. That's literally how I could. But you guys are interpreting that. It's because it came out the CEO's mouth. It's going to be just like that. And it's a standard official product with these metrics. And it's going to be to the T. You're not understanding that. Yes, Elon's the CEO, but he's in the studio like no other CEO. And that's a big difference. And you can read that again in Walter's book. He's in the studio like nobody else. Steve Jobs was even in the studio, but Steve Jobs was only in the studio.
He knew the design and software. He didn't know the engineering because, of course, factories were overseas and et cetera. Elon understands it all, the engineering, the science, the design, and the software. And so he's a different type of CEO, and he's actually on the field every day. Shout out to Elon and much love and appreciation to everybody that watch another Everyone Hates Tesla. Shout out to Mark and his podcast crew. I think they just need to be reviewing iPhones because those will always come out on date. Number 10, number 12, number 88. iPhone 88 will come out on time, on date, and you won't get much details until it's rolled out. So there you go. If you want it like that, then go ahead. But otherwise, you just don't understand it, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Rock your body. Yeah, yeah. Everybody hates Tesla all day. Why they hating on big homie Elon? Shout out to America. See you guys on the next one. Everyone loves to hate Tesla. Let's get it.